Oh my gosh. Is that is that Phil? This is the stove from the beachcombers. Oh, the beachcombers. Yeah. I did in Provincetown as a kid. This is what? Yeah, just the old beachcomber stove. Yeah. So this is the first one you did as a kid? That I finished you because f Henry was so he was so uh, determined to keep students away from doing oh. pictures that were finished. Oh. He said you come here to study, not to make pictures. <laughs> this has been really a great experience for me to get in your head a little bit, but I love how you shift and change and this is so different from this yeah. and this is different from that and yeah. that's what I really want to try to show here is some progression yeah. of where you know where you started and where yet you're it's all connected because very much so because his there's something about his color that's yep. his you know there's a very much purity of tonality which is yep. his hallmark and even in that early early painting you pulled you know the the colors he's bringing out they're they're singing I know they really are no, I'm, I'm very fascinated that you pulled that. Yeah. I, I saw it right away and I was like, whoa. I was like, yeah, I, there's just something about that pipe and that. And there was there was a little, There's. it's called the Irish pot. It's oh, a yeah. green, I like that one too. Yeah. But I but I like, I really like this. Yeah. yeah. It's really, really, there's something really, you know, like especially if you've been in the Beach Commerce Club yeah. before, it really has See, this. I was cabin boy for three years. Yeah. And, uh, Three of the most precious years of my life, because, as I said to someone, they said, "Where'd you go to school?" I said, "I went to school at the Beach Club." <laughs> I said, "Because I had the the advantage of every Saturday getting a critique from people that I looked up to." Yeah, sure. Kane, Dickinson, Dickinson, yep, Alco, yep, Eddie Eula. Wow. I mean, these guys were really good painters. Yep. And I looked up to them. Yeah. So they give me a crit for the week. God. Yeah. That was my school. I And you couldn't ask for a better no, school. No. 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 Yeah. And that's another thing, Sal, is the way that you, you know, got yourself here, but you, you took advantage of it, not, not in a bad way, like of these guys, like yeah. to ask them to look yeah. at your work. I mean, because a lot of people would be afraid to do that, I would think. Well, but, I was lucky because uh, I was the cabin boy there. I was like... A, what was your duty as the cabin boy? What well, were you supposed to do? it was so little. I had to sleep there, upstairs. Oh. <laughs> That was fine because I didn't have to pay any rent. Right. And secondly, on Saturdays, they have a Saturday dinner. Right. I had to wash the dishes and yep. the pots and pans and <laughs> sweep the floors. That was my primary duty. Plus, just living there, yep. having somebody on the property. You know? Yeah. So that was my greatest moments of my life, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And how old were you at that, at that uh, point? I started at 19, oh, wow. 20, 21, 22. Almost a 23, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. It yeah. really is. But, you know, what you've taken from those other artists like Malakote or McCain or, yeah. or Dickinson, you, it seems Austin like, Alfred. yeah, you took took that, but then you created, yeah, you, then I started, yeah, and it's that, like masticating something and mm -hmm. then something comes yep. out, you know. I come to the studio every day, not knowing when I'm going to paint, most of the days. If I got someone who's going to sit for me, that's different. But if I'm, it's a conceptual day, in other words, I'm painting something from my head, from my experiences, then I come to the studio pure, unadulterated, uninfluenced. And I let whatever's in this room if, uh, affect me. So that I, I'll take a, a deliberately, I'll, sometimes I work on these paintings upside down just to get away from the idea of the reality that we're so used to. And then you see things in a different way. And I, I was reading Corot, some of his notes, and he said something to this effect that if you're painting a landscape, and he did gorgeous paintings of Italy and France, and you, you leave the reality, the realism of the object you're painting to the very end and just explore the painting in terms of its shapes and colors, which is very modern. See? And if you look at Corot's great things, you'll see what he, what he was doing. I mean, he was deliberately doing things to his landscapes that made them not just reproductions of nature, they were more than that. They have a certain mystery to them, 
a certain harmony of color and shape. Now, because I've been looking at this, kind of sticking with this palette today, but this one is kind of like hitting me on the side here, and I, I really like it a lot. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Now, is this working for, are you working from memory on this, or? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's really beautiful. The sky is really dramatic. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I just came down the other day and said, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Out. I keep, I'm like, I keep wanting to look at it. I'm trying to look over here and I can't stop. But yeah, I do like that quite a bit. Yeah. It's really, really nice. Yeah. So this is, this group of work was in the house in the basement. I've never seen any of these before. So essentially what I'm thinking of in the, in the curation of this exhibition is to really, it's not one series, it's not one time period, it's more about my, my it, it's kind of documenting my relationship with Sal, like things that we have in common, like clamming and Italy and stuff like that, but it's also going to have portra some portraits, some self-portraits, some florals, and I'm trying to show a lot of things that haven't been seen before. So looking at this whole body work, this is all fresh to me. I've never seen any of this. So I, I'm kind of, you know, going through and seeing, trying to think about what I already have in and then what I'm missing or something that just completely catches my eye and I can't, I have to have it. <laughs> I'm 95 in two months and I feel every time I touch something now, it may not be good, it may not be bad, but it's me at this time of my life and I'm sort of breaking down the rules and at the same time I am a pupil of these rules. So there's a, there's a conflict, there's a dichotomy here, but uh, I think it's important that when we get to a certain age that we finally realize some of our youthful dreams and, and, and utilize them to create something that you feel would show the progression in your life from the beginning to the end. So I'm taught the end now and I'm, I've enjoyed every minute of it and I've had the opportunity like many of my friends never had of developing this kind of individual philosophy of, of painting. That's my cradle, yeah.